So in 2005, a young Taylor Swift joined the uh, Nashville record company Big Machine, where she recorded, I believe, like six albums with like massive hits that sent her to just be one of the top selling artists in America. In 2018, when her contract with Big Machine Records was up, she moved over to Universal Republic Records. The problem was Big Machine owned all the recordings for her songs and they were sold out from like under her by her manager, Scooter Braun, to his own company where he now gets all the royalties for streams and plays and features and stuff. The good news is, even though Taylor was not the owner of the original recording, she still was the owner of the songs themselves. So when artists, especially new and up and coming artists like Taylor Swift was back in 2005, sign on with record labels to produce an album, the record label foots the bill and pays for everything that goes into recording, you know, like studio time, engineers, musicians, whatever, um, and in return, they take ownership of those recordings um, and also the risks involved with signing on new artists and usually a large portion of whatever royalties that those songs get. Taylor didn't own those recordings, but she did have ownerships of the songs themselves because she wrote them. She's now gone on to re-record four of those six original albums with Universal Records. As a music producer for the past 10 years or so, that is super fascinating to me. I've never had to produce the same song twice the exact same way or as close as I could possibly do it. And so I just wanted to listen to these songs and just kind of take a song from each of these four re-recorded albums and just compare them. So uh, yeah, I'm super curious. Let's check this out. All right, so I wanna go through all four of her albums and just listen to like one song from each in both the re-recorded and the original. Um, and I think let's just start with Fearless. I think that's a pretty, it's, it's the first song of Fearless. It's the title track. I haven't listened to this probably in, how long ago did this come out? Long time ago. First, let's listen to the original. I'm gonna leave my volume at the same level. Such a Nashville mix, I love it. Yeah, definitely different. I don't like the electric guitar, the lead guitar as much. A little twangy and not as, not as intricate, I think. Ooh. There's a glow off the pavement. You walk me to the car. Something about the way the oh. looks when it's just rain. There's a glow off the pavement. You walk me to the car. And you know I want to ask you to dance huh. right there in the middle of the parking lot. Whoa, okay, so yeah, definitely a big jump in age, like just the voice, <clears throat> the original is so much younger, wow. Oh, do not like the drums. That is overly compressed, the snare is just gone. Definitely has a lot more of the uh, Nashville twang. Definitely prefer the drums in the original. <laughs> I do like the acoustic guitar mandolin in the uh, Taylor's version now. Fearless. <laughs> That's great. Let's keep going with the original, uh, the Taylor's version. Oh. A lot more compression. 
For those who don't know, a compression is, it's a program or a, it's it actually originally was done analog and analog. Now a lot of it's done in a computer, but it's basically pushing up the sounds that are quiet and pushing down the sounds that are loud, that are loud. So it kind of levels all the volume to a certain level. It can also kind of take out transients. Transients is that tss, tss first sound that happens. Like when I hit the desk, that clunk is the transient. Then everything after that is the tail. So compression can also like boost the transient or get rid of the transient, boost the tail or get rid of the tail. Um, it's quite a useful tool and they're using a lot of it in um, Taylor's version here. Yeah, I don't like the mix here as much. I think it's kind of just over smashed. Well. So baby drive slow. So we run out of road in this one horse town. I wanna stay right here in this passenger seat. You put your right Yes! Kinda love it, this song. I do like Taylor's vocal in this, the newer version. Huh. Cool. All right. So Taylor's version versus the original. What do I like best? I like Taylor's vocal in this one. I think that the, her newer recorded version, the, vo the vocal's better. I think it's more her. I think a lot, a lot of her original albums. She's from Pennsylvania, mind you. So she doesn't have. I don't think she grew up with a like Nashville twang in her voice. I think that was kind of put on for the heck of the whole country thing. I lived in Pennsylvania for a long time. People don't really talk like that over there. So I think her getting, moving away from that accent really helps her as a singer just be more natural and easy without having, it's easier for her to sing, I think, without having to worry about keeping that 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 hick thing in her voice anyway um i do like the drums in the original version i think they were recorded better better tuned less compression which i prefer i really like in taylor's version the just the, the ambience of the acoustic instruments like the little the mandolin and the acoustic guitar in there i thought that was really cool electric guitar i liked it in the original version i think i do like the, the i think i like taylor's version better here so there's finally a way to actually participate directly in the Taylor economy. Let me explain. Kaoshi is the first legal financial exchange in the US where you can bet on events. It's basically like the New York Stock Exchange or the NASDAQ, but instead of investing in stocks, you can invest in the things you care about and know about. The exchange has hundreds of thousands of users and already has seen more than $500 million in trading. But here's where it gets interesting. Kaoshi has a ton of music markets where you can make money by betting on the music and artists that you are most excited about. You can trade things like will the Tortured Poets Department be Album of the Year? Will Taylor be Spotify Artist of the Year? And there's dozens of other music, movie, and culture markets. So here's how it works. Let's say you believe Tortured Poets Department will be Billboard's Album of the Year. It is currently priced at 73%. You can buy Torture Poets album being album of the year for 73 cents. The price changes based on what the market thinks the odds of the events are. Let's say you want to buy 100 shares. You pay 73 cents times 100, $73. And if Torture Poets is Billboard album of the year, you get $100. If not, you get zero. You can also sell your shares before the results come in. If the share price goes to 80%, you can sell 100 shares for $80 and make a profit before the event ends. Kalshi has a ton of music and movie markets, as well as markets on politics, climate, economics, tech, games, literally so much, and it's even legal in all 50 states. You can sign up using my link in the description below, and the first 500 traders to use my link get a free $20 credit. Thank you, Kalshi, for sponsoring this video. Moving on to the to the Red album, I wanted to listen to I Knew You Were Trouble because that was like one of the few songs that I actually listened to growing up where of Taylor Swift's music. Let's go ahead and listen to the original. Once upon a time, a few mistakes ago, I was in your sights.
very similar electric guitar. Huh. Again, I liked her new recording, like the vocal. It's got a deeper kick drum too, which I like. Lower. I like this actually. All right, before we get to the chorus. Yeah, she's come a long way vocally. Oh, such a good melody. This is such a good song. She's a lot more control over her voice. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Oh, that big. That, that, that's it. Not sure I like that. Oh, that was all over the place. Oh, that's way better than this. Interesting. Okay, so they really screwed up that drop there. I, I have a feeling maybe a not so dubstep electronic music producer did that because that was that mix was everywhere. The production was goofy too. Apologies, he'll never see you cry. Pretends he doesn't know that he's the reason why you're drowning, you're drowning, you're drowning. Yeah, I don't like the vocal performance as much here. Ooh, never noticed a little harmony. That's cool. He'll never see you cry. Pretends he doesn't know that he's the reason why you're drowning, you're drowning, you're drowning. And I heard you moved on from whispers on the street. A new notch in your belt is all I'll ever be. And now I see, now I see, now I see. Goodness, that I can't put my finger on what it is, but it's just the synth and the, the reverse riser. They're just like way too prominent, EQ'd way up front. It just, it just doesn't hit as hard. Yeah, that's way better. It's way more dynamic. It moves. Yeah. So you put me down. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. So shame on me and let out. You be two places and never been. Now I'm lying on the cold hard ground. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Yeah. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Yeah. Yeah, okay, they tried, but they didn't quite capture the, I feel like they just didn't quite capture the skill of whatever producer did that back in the day uh, with the original. So yeah, I really like the vocal performance and like some of the like the intro, like the bit of acoustic-y bits and the harmony and stuff and the pr processing on the vocal. 
but that that drop at the, at the in the chorus there was just such an epic thing when it came out and they just didn't quite capture it for me there so yep that's uh one point to the original let's listen to enchanted um i used to I, i've heard i used to listen to enchanted when i was uh, younger um because uh, i was a fan of owl city growing up and so a song about owl city from taylor swift is kind of cool so uh yeah let's listen to the original there i was again tonight forcing laughter faking smiles same old tired lonely place i definitely hear the um Pitch correction on there. Sincerity, shifting eyes and vacancy, Which is totally normal for any major productions. It's just used on everything. Enchanting to me, you. That, like... That acoustic guitar is definitely a lot less brittle. It's recorded better. I like that. There I was again tonight, forcing laughter, faking smiles, same old tired, huh. lonely place. She definitely sounds like walls of insincerity, shifting eyes and vacancy, vanished when I saw your face. All I can say is it was. Hmm. Me, you. The guitar lost it a little bit. <laughs> okay, so she like vocally, she manages to make that in Taylor's version <clears throat> has a different feel. Like the original, it felt more like a young girl in a some sort of gala party something, and it was like more of like a nervous thing. But the, the Taylor's version, it's more of like a depressing thing. And I definitely prefer the original feel that it gave off. Let's keep going with the original. Your eyes whispered, have we met? Cross the room, your silhouette starts to make its way to me. The playful conversation starts Counter all your quick remarks Like passing notes in secrecy And it was enchanting to me I know you want to listen to it. I do too. Let's get there. All I can say is I was enchanted to meet you. This night is sparkling. Don't you let it go. I'm on the strut, rushing all the way home. Okay, here's where I'm at. I think the Taylor's version is a better recording. Technically better song. Better mixing, better production, better recording, blah, 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 whatever. But the original just has that innocence, that young Taylor sound that works really well with the specific song. And I think uh, that this one goes to the original. I've heard some controversial things from my sisters about the 1989 re-recording, and I haven't listened to these so I would know, but I want to go to Blank Space because that is a fairly technically produced song. There's a lot of electronic elements and that could be interesting reproducing. So let's go ahead and listen to the original Blank Space. Next mistake. 
that lyric always cracks me up. You look like my next mistake. The production on this song is really good. Very different. Make the bad guys good for a weekend. Whoa, way more pronounced snare there. Meet you where you been. I could show you incredible things. Magic, madness, heaven, sin. Saw you there, and I thought, oh my god, look at that face. You look like my next mistake. Love's a game, wanna play. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So, first, just talking production. The it's a lot more like out in the open. Just like kind of the the Taylor's version. It feels a lot more like kind of raw, which is surprising because when we were listening to Fearless, it was much more compressed. This one is less compressed, and um, I don't actually like it as much. I like the um, like the mix and the production of the. The original so far also taylor i feel like it's not lazy but just like there's not as much energy in her voice in so far in taylor's version here but let's go ahead and listen to the chorus i can make the bad guys good for a weekend so it's gonna be forever or it's gonna go down in flames you can tell me when it's over love that sin oh it's so good We ever figure out if it's Starbucks lovers or Starstruck lovers? What is it? I can make the bad guys good for a weekend. So it's gonna be forever, or it's gonna go down in flames. You can tell me when it's over. Oh, yeah, synth. If the high was worth the pain, don't like the synth as much here. It's kind of weak. Yeah. It's a little too brittle and thin. The, the mix for the original is actually deeper, which is interesting. Um, yeah, that one goes to the original as well. Whew. So obviously I only listened to about, I only listened to four songs and there's there's almost a hundred songs that she's re-recorded. And so like it's, I guess that's not super fair to just listen to songs, to, to four songs and then make a decision. But from what I heard, I think I really did like the, the original versions better in these specific songs for different reasons. And that's what's weird. It's like, I liked in Fearless, I liked the new version. I liked the Taylor's version for the, for the lyrical performance, for the mix and stuff. But then in the, in blank space, I didn't like the mix. I liked the mix of the other one because it had more compression and it was more, it was a deeper mix. So like, I don't know, it was kind of all over the place for me. But yeah, the, the originals definitely kind of won out for me. I really like Taylor's voice now in the more slower, somber songs. I think that kind of works for that. The songs that like you're looking for that young, innocent type of vocal that that her older voice doesn't work as well for that in my opinion but that was really interesting that was like as a music producer that's such an interesting thing to look at is two of the exact same songs recorded as closely together like, as similarly as possible um by different i assume different producers and different um, that would be an interesting exercise to exactly reproduce a song i might try that i hope this was fun i had a lot of fun with this and uh yeah hope to see you again soon see ya